What's up everybody, Mr. 707 here. Do my second video for the day. And uh, if you can't tell, I'm a little under the weather um, due to some stress and uh, the stomach bug that I got from my daughter. She had the stomach bug and uh, now she's feeling better and now I'm feeling it. So uh woke up this morning with the mud butts and it's been on and popping ever since. But... <laughs> Hopefully I get over it, you know what I'm saying? Just try to stay hydrated and, uh, you know. Uh, but the stress part is, uh, you know, in the process of buying a house, uh, you know, and uh, just going back and forth uh, with the, the, the paperwork and, uh, you know, just they wanting the paperwork, resubmitting paperwork and because it's not a tr traditional loan. Uh, it's a, like a, um, you know, an ordinary loan, you know, for, for like a, you know, this house burned up on the inside, there's a lot of smoke damage. So I'm going to go through and do some repairs and I'm, I'm going to do majority of it on my own and with my, my own crew. And, uh, it's stress involved in that, you know, it's a risk, you know, you never, you know, never know what, uh, this is my first time doing this type of, um, real estate purchase, uh, and uh, so it's, uh, I'm, I'm excited about it and scared at the same time. I don't know if you hear my stomach over here bubbling, but it's like. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm excited about it and nervous at the same time. You know, I'm nervous at the same time because, you know, it could it could go good or it could go bad, you know. But it's, you know, I just want to be diligent in my approach. Um, I want to do everything right by the book while not sp spending a lot of money and a lot of time on it, you know, just spend what it takes, you know, and then just do it right, you know, something I can be proud of. I I'm not sure if I'm going to actually move into it after it's done or, or sell it or rent it out. Um, I cross that bridge when I get there. You know, I want all options are on the table, and I'm gonna weigh all options and and see what works out best. Um, you know, I'm gonna pray about it. Um, but the good thing is, I have over 100 days of continuous sobriety. Um, I did have like five months, and uh, alcohol was my substance of choice. I did have five months um, earlier in the year. And then relapsed for a couple months and, you know, got back on my sobriety game. I did, I did do like a, a program where I do group meetings and, you know, and, uh, you know, and network with other people dealing with wanting to be sober. And uh, I'm not ashamed to admit that nothing like that. If, if anybody has a substance abuse problem, you know, um, seek out help before it could, it, it could be become a problem for you and um me if, if i was still drinking i probably wouldn't be in the right frame of mind to do um to be business minded you know and be um you know to make the right decisions you know so and that's how i used to handle stress but now you know, I just have to figure out ways uh, to handle stress without drinking alcohol, or, you know, so, and it's going well, I, it's going well, I'm happy with the direction I'm going in with my sobriety and um, getting approved to, to buy this house, a fixer-upper, and, and, you know, things is going good, you know, and it, even if things don't work out with this house, you know, it's like you can't be afraid to, um, to challenge yourself. You can't be afraid to do something new. You can't be afraid to fail. Um, of course, you want to be calculated in your decision making. You want to make the best possible decisions that you can. But at the same time, you can't let fear hold you back. You know, <clears throat> and uh, we just, you know, we can pray about it. That's all we can do. You know what I'm saying? But that uh, I want to talk about um, some v uh, videos on YouTube that I I checked out. Uh, one was the uh, X-rated interview uh, on on Thizzler TV, and uh, man, you know, this is a this is kind of what I touched on on one of my videos uh, this week about 
you know, guys doing 25 years and then and then they want to get on their game, you know. And, uh, you know, he touched on a lot of points about how, how he was out acting wild and just, you know, acting like a gremlin, you know what I'm saying? I don't know if, it, you know, a lot of people might not, if they're younger, they might not know what gremlin was, uh, what a gremlin was, but it was just like a little demon, you know what I'm saying? Just out, just wilding out. And, you know, he had to do some time over that, 25 years. And then, you know, he was still wilding out in prison and, you know, he could have could have lost his life on the streets and in prison, but he's out now. And, uh, you know, basically, you know, talking about um, people that get out of doing a couple years in pr prison and, and making it seem glamorous and, you know, and, you know, it's like a badge of honor. You know what I'm saying? You know, and, it, you know, that made sense to me. Like, why would you why would you? Why would you go to the pen for a couple years and then get out and make it seem like a badge of honor, like you graduated to the next level of loser? You know what I'm saying? You know, and I'm not calling people that did time in the pen losers, but it's nothing to, to glorify or glamorize to the younger generation. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's real in the in, in the in the penal system, man. People get stabbed up. People, you know, all type of stuff. You know, people commit suicide. People drug overdose, you know what I'm saying? You got sexual assaults. You got uh, just everything under the sun, you know, alcohol. You know, it's kind of like, to me, you're not escaping anything that you would see in the streets. But on a whole worse level, you know what I'm saying? And it's like, why would you want to, why would you want to subject yourself to that? And, you know, I was I was watching the, uh, something about Charlie Murphy, uh, Unsung, about how he, how he and his crew robbed a, a a taxi cab driver and they split two bucks a piece. You know what I'm saying? It's like, man, come on, man. You could have first off killed this dude by accident. Like say he put up a struggle or somebody, the gun went off him. You know, he blew this guy's head off or something. Now you sitting in jail for the rest of your life over a $2 score. Even if it was 200 to 2000, it's not worth it. And no money, amount of money is worth taking anybody's life. You know what I'm saying? Especially when, you know, you know, when you could have made that on a legit job. You know what I'm saying? Um, I'm going to talk about uh, a lot of people talking about the Alpo sightings and all that. And, you know, Alpo free after doing 25 plus years and all that. And, you know, and, you know, and it's like, you know, the man made a lot of money. And he made a lot of enemies. But. He gave away all those years of his life, you know, and if he was that business minded, if he would have kept kept that same business mind he had to sell drugs to do something legit, he he possibly would have made the same, could have made the same amount of money and more by just applying some smarts, you know, and uh, killing and drug dealing and, and telling on people and you know, you get out of prison and people making videos about you, about Alpo sightings and, you know what I'm saying? And this is 25 le years later. It's like, what you would think after 25 years, you know, people wouldn't be mentioning your name so much. But with this social media uh, going on, it's like you can't even escape that. You can't you can't just do your time and, and live a normal life after you get out. It's still following you constantly. After doing 25 years, man. So a lot of the young generation need to need to weigh the pros and the cons of their street life. Um, is it worth it to make to make a fast dollar? The the potential outcome that you can face, death or in jail. <clears throat> you know. <clears throat> um, just uh, think about the, the, the decisions you make. Uh, and that's why I would like to always push sobriety because I think a lot of people make negative decisions when they're under the influence and uh, they pay for it. You know, they pay for it later. They end up, they wake up in a jail cell and, you know, facing life. They might not even remember what happened, but they was under the influence of something that that brought out the worst in them. It wasn't in control of they sell. So, 
you know, that's why I don't respect any of these rappers that, that glorify drug usage, um, violence, uh, none of that. You know what I'm saying? You know, um, when I was coming up, like, li listening to music, like, in the 90s, you know, they rapped about weed or whatever. But nobody ever, nobody ever glorified smoking crack or doing, taking pills. And, <clears throat> you know, that came later in, like, the... And like the the two thousands, you know, people glorified popping Molly's and, and Xanax and and uh, all type of stuff. Uh, somebody got has said a good point. I think it was Lord Jamar. He said uh, Eminem is the one who kicked off bragging about taking opioids and pills, and then from then on, it was like a snowball effect. But none of that shit is cool, man. That shit is not cool. If any, if you listening to anybody glorifying rapping about drug usage and this and that or anything that's of low moral standards it's not cool man is they're limited they're not good rappers they're limited in what they speak about so they got to speak about negative stuff you know and it's just it's, it's, it's demonizing man that's not something you want to be listening to every day and that you want a part of your subconscious mindset you know what i'm saying you know <clears throat> um I uh, watched another video uh, on Breakfast Club. I think it was like Donkey of the Day or something like that. And they was talking about a rap group, uh, a rapper. I don't really know the dude. I'm not really interested in like a lot of these newer cats. But he was talking about how the cat was uh, filming a music video in a park or something like that. Close to a school. In the school like let out in the middle of them filming <clears throat> you got dudes out there with firearms filming it um like assault weapons you know you got convicted felons you got cats with warrants out there in a in a movie in a uh video shoot so you know naturally people parents kids parents are gonna call the cops like these these all these dudes out here with guns and stuff and the cops show up a bunch of them break out they leave. I guess they got away, and then I guess it was a warrant out for his arrest or something like that. And uh, so he ended up. I guess they most of them got away, but then they ended up posting it on um, World Star Hip Hop, a video or something. All them dudes got indicted because now they like, okay, that's him, that's him, that's him. He's a felon. Uh, blah blah this. So he's got warrants. They rounded all them dudes up, man. It's like 10, 12 dudes, man. Just from just being social social media gangsters. Even if you are a real gangster, man, it's like don't why are you putting it all on on social media and then glamorizing it for the youth? You know what I'm saying? For the youth. Cause it don't it's not appealing to me. So it's gonna it's gonna have to be for the youth. You know what I'm saying? Um glamorizing it, man, and I guess the dude uh they, they, he he bonded out and they cut his ankle monitor off and back on the run. It's like these dudes are facing federal charges and you know it's like, bro, come on, man, is that worth the t the time you got to give your life to the system for fame and fortune? And then when you get out, you're gonna be old. You never even had really had a name for yourself. You're gonna get out and be old, and nobody is. Gonna care about your story. Nobody's gonna care about your rap career. No, it's over for you. And then what? Are, what are you gonna do? You, if you don't have no skills besides in the streets, you're gonna you're gonna catch another case and go back to prison. That's all it is. It's just a cycle. It's a cycle, man. So anybody that glamorizes prison life, anybody that glamorizes a negative lifestyle, drug usage, is the people that I don't associate myself with, uh, I'm I'm hoping like somebody in the youth that could listen to this message and and learn something from it. Obviously, I'm not gonna reach everybody, especially with the size of my channel. But if I can reach one person, you know, I'm happy about that. You know what I'm saying? You know, <clears throat> uh, you know, with with the construction background that I have. From working on houses and stuff, and 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 doing research, I'm able to 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 purchase this house and fix on it myself. You know what I'm saying? And 
and make a few dollars or have a nice home to stay in and you know um uh, and uh I'm I'm proud of that. I'm not I'm not proud. I wouldn't be proud to say I bought a house with drug money or I'm robbing people and you know what I'm saying because I know that's short lived karma. What goes around comes around, man, and then you reap what you sow. You know what I'm saying? And that's just real talk, man. So, um, but yeah, I'm a, I'm gonna post up a uh, link in the comments about the X-rated interview uh, interview on Thizzler TV. I'm gonna post up a uh, link. In the description, not the comments, in the description about um, 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 the Breakfast Club uh, donkey of the day about those guys that got busted making a, a, a rap video and all that. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to cut this video off here, man. Uh, <clears throat> uh, yeah, so chime in, man. If y'all got anything to say about it, uh, leave a comment, uh, like, and subscribe to my channel. All right, Mr. 707 now.